Okay. We're continuing. <clears throat> of how to, to create a good atmosphere and how far it can go. And let me start with the story, Dafka. The story was in El Israel. There is few boys, like at 12 years old, they were, playing soccer outside, you know. And, but next to them, it was a small school that one of the organization they're doing outreach They had a school there to to bring people closer to, as you say, Yiddish right. One of the rabbis went out to speak to the boys. <clears throat> and he was asking them, maybe you, you wanna come in. There is a shiur a Torah shiur. The kids were not that excited because they wanted to continue to play. But the eyes of the rabbi caught one child that he was kind of hesitating if yes or no. So he told this boy, listen, it's worth it for you to come in. We have very good refreshments. And also we have a cold Coca-Cola. We have a cold Coke. So the child says, what? There is a Coke? Okay, I'm coming in. And he came to the class. And, and he said, I'm going in because I'm thirsty. Thank you, John. Not because of the shoe, because he's thirsty. So he went in and he sat with all other boys listening to the Shio and Permet, he saw cookies and cakes and pizza and cold Coke, like he promised. And the atmosphere was very nice, very nice. The next day, the child came again to play soccer. And the Rav came out again and he told them, are you coming to the class? So the child said, today also there is called Coca-Cola? He said, yes. For sure, we have Coca-Cola. Good. So he said, if this is the, the case, I'm coming in. Okay, the Coke or the goodies is good to bring the child inside. 
But if we're going to stay only with the Coca-Cola, what is going to be the end results? He will find a Coca-Cola elsewhere. That's not what's going to make it. The main thing is to bring him inside and then to feed him what he needs to be fed. So the Shiu was a Gemara Shiu, which is not easy. But they have knew how to how to explain very pleasantly. And Gara, by the way, he snuck in words of Irat and Mitzvot and Musar. Very, he was an expert. And the atmosphere was very nice, a pleasant one. And the child came every day without even asking if there is cold Coca-Cola or not. He came already automatically. We don't have to bribe him anymore. After a few weeks, his friend joined him. He was telling them how good it is, how enjoyable it is. So they came also. But this child was the one of the steady ones. And he finished even few masechtot. Few Gemarot, he was able to finish with them. In the age of 15, already three years passed, he was until then in a public school. Now he's saying to his Abba, I want to go to Yeshiva. Huh? Imagine 15 years old boy. They never went to Yeshiva. All of a sudden, he wants to go to Yeshiva in age of 15. His parents were far away from Judaism. Even though they are Israelis, but they're far away. And they didn't understand what came into the mind of this child. So his father asking him, do you understand what you're talking about? And the child, with a stubbornness of a teenager, he says, yes, I understand. I thought about it, and I want to go to yeshiva. I love the Torah. I want to go to yeshiva. The father got very angry at him. Very angry. He said, hey, you, listen to me. If you're going to a yeshiva, I'm not going to give you a dime. I'm not going to give you a dime. And his father was a wealthy man. He grew up, as we say, on a silver platter. So this was the only weapon that a father can use. I'm not, you're not going to see it anymore. He says, I don't care. Don't give me a dime. I'm going to Yeshiva. He found himself a Yeshiva. This boy found himself a Yeshiva. And he learned like there is no tomorrow. But now, his suit that he came in with 
or when he got very old. Doesn't look good, Bechlal, no. And his hat from black became brown. He was so old already. Worn out. But he doesn't have a dime in his pocket. His father don't want to give him a dime. He needed books. He didn't have the money to buy the books. And the boy was praying to Hashem. And he's saying to Hashem, Ribono shel olam. Please. Do something that I have, that I will have the ability to buy myself what I need. I need a clothing. I need a hat. I need books. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for anything else. Basic stuff that I need. I don't want to go to people to, to ask for a tzedakah. Please, Hashem, please. Only one request I have. Just this I want from you. And I'm expecting, accepting upon myself to finish the whole shas in three years. What a boy, huh? In three years, they say, I'll finish everything. Few days passed, he is walking on the street in Haifa. All of a sudden, he found a bundle of money. Somebody lost it. He picked up the bundle, counted out 20,000 shekels like six and a half thousand dollars for a yeshiva boy it's what he found it so now he didn't want to use it he has to ask his rabbi i found it on the street do i have to announce it it's mine so Look how much temptation there is. And yet he says, I'm not going to touch it unless my Rebbe will tell me it's allowed. He came to his Rebbe. He told him, Rebbe, I found 20,000 shekel. He told him, where, where did you find it? He told him the, the place and everything. He says, you can have it because this section Mostly Arabs living there. You don't have to announce. This money is all yours. Enjoy it. And the child was praising Hashem, thanking Hashem. You answered my prayers and he bought himself a suit, a hat, books, whatever he needed. Good. Now he has to finish us in three years. Okay? He's learning day and night. A promise is a promise. Day and night. So, we met after three years, he made see you, Mashas. What a party, huh? A child finishes shas. Ah. And now he needs to get married. Yes. A person coming to the yeshiva, a wealthy man, he has a daughter, and he is asking the Rosh Yeshiva. I need a good boy for my daughter. I'll take care of them, everything that. 
but I need a good boy. He says, my daughter, she is a tzanua, tzadiket, irat shabayim, and beautiful character, midot ovot. And she is very smart and very talented. Everything that you want is there. No, no. The Rosh Hashiva without any hesitation. He said, I have a boy for you. Made to order. Custom made. And right away, he pinpoint on this boy. Now, his parents are not keeping anything. What's going to happen now? His parents are not keeping anything. The anti, anti. So the Shiva says, such a bebahu, learning day and night. He finished us already. He said, let me see the boy. Let me talk to him, see how is he. Then I'll tell you if he's good for my daughter or not. Okay. He sat down with him. He saw the gentleman. Loyalty. Like a mentor. So he said, okay. They went out. Chick chak. And they got engaged. The father of the boy saying to the the Mechutonim, the Mechutonim, I'm not going to give a dime. Don't count on me for the wedding. I'm not giving a dime to this kind of a child that I have. Could you imagine? He has such a boy, and he said, I'm not giving a dime, I'm not giving. The father of him, the Kala says, I don't need your money. I don't need it, I'll take care of them. I don't need it. So now, listen to this now. In the engagement, the father of the Kala coming to the boy, he's saying to him, maybe you can tell me how you were able to finish the Shas in three years. How did you do it? So he told them the story. He said, I didn't have a dime. And I promised Hashem that if Hashem will send me what I need, I'll finish the Shas in three years. And I found 20,000 shekels on the street. And I had to finish the Shas. My Rebbe said I can use the money because probably it was belonged to a Goy. All of a sudden, the face of the father-in-law to me became pale. He says, are you okay? He says, I cannot believe what you tell me. It was my 20,000 shekel. I lost it. The money that you found, I lost it. It was my, my money, but don't feel bad. I gave up on this already. But listen to this now. Look how Hashem operates. He said, I felt bad that I lost that 20,000 shekel, 
but I didn't know that with these 20,000 shekels, I'm building my son-in-law that I don't know yet that I'm gonna have such a son-in-law. But don't forget how everything started, Bashlal. No, where did it start this whole deal? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, very good. Bravo. A smile, a Coca-Cola, pleasant, and the child is in. Because the atmosphere in the class was good. And look what can happen. That's what we have to do at home. I'm saying it to the parents. Create an atmosphere, a pleasant one. Don't go and say, what's going to, what will come out of you? Why don't you do homework? Okay. You can do it, you can do whatever you want. But this child, in the end, will hate it. There's no love there. And I will continue saying it over and over again. You don't know what atmosphere can do. I don't like to to talk about it, but I have to tell you, all the people that were not observant and today Bo Hashem, the observant and the kids and everybody all observant that went through us. I didn't do any magics. No magics. We just gave them a very nice atmosphere. Pleasant one, loving one. You cannot resist it. You cannot resist it. A child is not a number. It's not an object. And he's not a computer. He's a person. Do you know how many kids In one yeshiva, they don't do well, Bechla, no. When they change the yeshiva to the other one, a different child. What happened? What happened? Ask yourself. In the other yeshiva, the atmosphere was not good. The atmosphere was not good. No warmth, no smile, no clue. We have to achieve. Tach, 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 they were finished. A child, some kids maybe can take it, but I don't know what what's gonna happen in later on time. But most of the kids that I know, they need a loving atmosphere. One one. A 
caring one. Leave the curriculum outside. They will learn. This book of boy came from public school. He finished shots in three years. When a child wants to learn on his own, he will learn. He just needs to feel the sweetness. That's all. So it goes all over the place. You know, some kids hate Shabbat, hate it. Why, why? Why should the kids hate Shabbat? Such a beautiful day. Many kids, you doesn't, you just tell them Shabbat. They hate it. Why is it? Because the atmosphere at home is like an army. They've been forced to eat what they don't like. To say at the Torah, why are they not in the mood? We're forcing on them. So the atmosphere is bad atmosphere, so they don't like it. How many parents are forcing the kids to eat on Yom Shabbat? You don't want to talk to me? <laughs> what did I do to you? We want them to sit at the table. We want them to eat. We want them to join. Of course, yeah. And, and what they want? They want to play sometimes. They, want, they don't want to sit at the table. They don't want to eat this. They would only want to eat that. Okay. Okay. So what are you gonna do? They don't wanna sit on the table. It's it's, it's definitely it's it's definitely more intriguing like when I make it into like a fun thing to come sit at the table. But why don't they want to sit on the table? Because they're it's the they're they're probably bored. They're not interested. <laughs> so instead of us looking at us and saying maybe we boring them it. So right away we aiming at the child. We have to discipline him. So we have to show him when. Yom Shabbat, because Abba is, is at home, Habibi, start to use your authority. So maybe it's time for us to be creative. What do you say? Let's do this. If you have a store, right? It's important for you to take care of the customers. Yeah. Are you falling asleep? No. No? Why not? Because you have a store, you want to take care of the customers, so the customers are happy. So now, who is more important, your customers or your kids? Definitely. What happened Friday night? 
We didn't make them happy. <laughs> you, the parents eat a little bit and right away the head Who is sleeping? Harab, could it be that because the parents are overly exhausted because all the works they're doing, so like once they sit at a table, there is absolutely no energy at that point. It's not that they don't want to attend to the kids, but like sometimes I see people with younger kids, they really don't have any energy to like, at that point to do anything. I don't buy this. I'll tell you why. I've seen people sick. Sick. Going to work. Where are you going? You sick. I know, I have to go. And he smiles at the customers and he is exhausted. That's the truth. We have to say it. Imagine you a doctor and a lady, you've been called at three o'clock in the morning to, to the hospital, your client is giving birth. Is he exhausted? Yes. Does he have to be there? Yes. Does he have a choice? No. Now when he is there, he is awake? Or the nurses have to tell him, doctor, she is pushing. No, they're awake. They're completely awake. But then two hours later, they collapse. Why are they awake? Why, why? Because they have responsibility. Oh, very good answer. This answer I like. So how about our kids? No responsibility? Of course. I think some people don't see it that way. So don't blame the kids. They need what they need. So Rabbi, what do you do if your, if your spouse falls asleep and at the table? I don't want uh, to create problems now. <laughs> I mean, yes, he is very tired. You know, after after so she the whole met, week. Okay, okay. If Bemet, the kids are important for us. Bemet, Abba. I will come home early Friday. I will take a nap. Why? Because I have to prepare for my kids. Mm -hmm. I want to change the approach, the view. We don't give him enough attention, and that's what I mean. Every parent over here is ready to swear that they gave the kids so much attention. And I don't buy it so fast. Attention means you there, you creative. You initiating, you saying to them interesting stories that they like. 
you praise. Yes. Okay, everybody, every child like to hear a story. Especially if you know how to play the story. They will wait for Shabbat, they will wait. Let's see what Abba is coming up with this week. What a story we are gonna hear. And you make a quiz with prizes. And you don't force them to eat what they don't like to eat. Enough with this. You know you kids already. You should ask them, what do you want me to cook for you for Shabbat? Yeah. But we're going to classes. We hear that it's very good to eat fish by Shabbat, right? And the kids, oh, if you're not going to eat fish by Shabbat, you're not going to Olam Abba. But normally, huh? this fish will go through your nose, it will go. Why? Because he's a child. How about if you don't like a food and, and I and I will stick it inside your nose by force? Huh? That's okay. Don't forget, kids are people too. Rabbi, can I ask a question? Yes. On Shabbat, uh, can we have, should we have assigned seats for the kids or they should can sit wherever they want? Because in my house, it's always an issue. So we made assigned seats. My the older made... one sit next to Abba. They have to understand there is an order. It's part of the chinuch, part of the respect. Even if it's a girl, if the girl is first, she should sit next to the father? So in this case, she'd, stay, she'd sit next to the, the mother. Like I have two girls first and then two younger boys. So my husband made it that way that the, the, the two boys are... Um, are next to him, like one on the right, one on the left. But then one of my daughters always has an issue saying, I'm older, why? They're younger than me, why do they get to sit? I can hear it. So there's it's always actually... an issue with the seating arrangements. So if she wants to feel important to sit next to Abba, What's wrong with that? But then my boys don't want to give up their seats. They're saying, no, no. They all want to be next to him. So you're taking the boys and the girls and we should start to explain now. Okay? Or you can do every week we'll switch. This week is yours next week it's hers this one so everybody knows the terms it's a good idea mm -hmm. right I suggested that but my husband doesn't like that idea He's, no, no. he thinks it's going to be too complicated and too confusing you know why constantly switching make a child Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Don't you have a calendar? Yeah. Right. 
די שבת, סרה, נק שבת, חיים, סרט שבת, מוישלה, שבת, אלי שבע, and that's how it goes. Finished. What if Ima wants to sit next to Abba? Also good. But this is a little bit complicated because when guests will come, So we, at home, we did it always. I sat over there. My wife sat on the head, on the table also, on the, on the other side. Why? Because we have two chiefs. You see? If the atmosphere is good, it will not come to this. We have to explain, we have to talk, we have to convince. It takes time. It, you need patience for this. Patience, which we don't have. So, Shabbat should be the day that the kids looking forward to. Looking forward. Don't forget the whole week the eating in school in the yeshiva. The food, you know, it's a school food, okay? Finally, they have Yom Shabbat. Why can't we ask them, you have to enjoy Shabbat also. There is a mitzvah to enjoy Shabbat. We have to make them enjoy Shabbat also. Ask them, anyway, I'm cooking. So let me cook something that you eat. Not only that. Did it, did it, did it happen once that you screamed on your child by Shabbat? You, 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 you don't want to talk? Did you scream on your kids? Yes, yes. What you will do if your husband will scream at you on Yom Shabbat? I'll tell you a few reactions that I heard. When my husband started to raise his voice, I left the table and I went to my room. I didn't speak to him the whole Shabbat. Pa, 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 poo, poo, poo. Yes. So imagine a child now that you're skimming at him in front of his brothers and sisters. And on top of it, you're saying, not a brat, not a brachot, say the least. How do you think the child has to feel? 
So cute. How do you think the child feels? Embarrassed? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Humiliated? Yes. Yes. You took away all his respect, dignity, self-worth. And this is your Shabbat. It's Avon. It's a sin. The child has to enjoy Shabbat. He is also a Jew. How are we going to teach him to enjoy the Shabbat? It's all in our hands. Oh. A very nice question. I it's very hard for me to imagine uh, who came uh, unwanted. Uh -huh. I see. Okay, that's, you see, by going to your home, we're not solving the problem. There is a problem that we have to deal from the root of the problem. Because how many times you can run away? Let's say it's your in-laws. Unwanted. But where are you gonna run away? So there is a problem. Because the past 15 years, you didn't take care of the problem. If it's the side of the husband, so the husband has to talk to his parents and tell them, you're destroying my home. Something needs to be done. So, if he's not on your side, what do you want me to do? I feel bad for you. That's all I can say. Okay. Whoever is coming, to shake the Shlom Bayit. We have to open the door and show them the way out. Without any hesitation. If the parents don't know how to keep the mouth shut, They, they should not come. If they don't like what they see, they should not come. Everybody should know, did you marry your wife or did you marry your parents?
And don't feel for a second, don't think for a second that they see that they're not wanted, that you don't like them. And still they're coming. They'll come. It means that you are not important for them. They came for their son. You a tough luck. No. So this husband should know that his wife is she's not enjoying Shabbat. It's a terrible avon. Everybody should join, enjoy Shabbat. The atmosphere, the atmosphere. Even the Gemara talks about it. If a person have money either to buy Hanukkah candles or to buy Shabbat candles. Very poor. Either this, either this. What is that the law? He should buy candles for Shabbat, not for Hanukkah. Why? Shalom buy it. When there is light in the house, it's a different atmosphere. I hope that you got the message. It's a very important one. Many kids get off the derech because of this. Many yeshivot destroying kids because of this. And many parents doing also injustice, but not making the house a pleasant atmosphere. That's why when you have Shlom Bait, it's a pleasant to come to your house. The kids will feel so good. If you don't have, imagine how a child feels. He doesn't know what to expect. Who will scream at, at whom? If mommy will cry today, or Abba will leave. That's a place to live. I want you to think and you will and you will Hashem. See you tomorrow night. And we're gonna talk about how to build a child. So he should have a very good self-image about himself. Have a good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Rabbi.